they look to destroy homes and the only way to piece homes back together is for both people to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord A very good morning to all of you. Uh, <clears throat> you are a special group of people and I love you and we pray for you and we thank God that you are here with us today. This morning service, I pray that you will receive from the Lord each and every one of you whatever he has laid uh, in his agenda for your heart. I pray that God is going to give you strength as uh, we expect that some of you have joined us, most of you have joined us on the 21 day fast and this might be a very challenging fast for many of you but we know that as you plow through it that God is going to refine you on the other side. Your spiritual prayer when you talk to angels, when you talk to God, when you command demons after a fast, your spirit reaches a level of authority unlike other times. That gives that prayer to God, to angels and over demons, it gives it greater authority. And I pray that as you begin to fast and experience the crushing of the flesh, that your spirit levels are high and your prayer packs a punch. I pray this over each and every one of you. Once again I want to thank you for your contributions, for your faithfulness, for your tithing, for your offerings that allow me to stand on this pulpit and give you the word of the Lord. Um, this morning we're going to talk um, God has laid in my heart very especially that from the beginning of this year in fact towards the end of, of last year during the Christmas period there's been a, a burden laid in my heart I couldn't explain it or put my finger on it but it was with regards to family with regards to marriage and uh, you know when you go to work or wherever you go to there is always a sense of relief when you knock off and you have to come home and relax your mind is supposed to be relaxed your body is supposed to be relaxed but one of the most devastating things that can that a human being can go through is when home is not that kind of a place where there is tension arguments where there is no peace in that environment and I felt strongly in my spirit that the devil is targeting homes very especially children and the relationship between husband and wife and so you would have heard me mentioning that there needs to be a strength within the home and that bond needs to be very strong one of the ways in which you must ensure the strength of your home is when both couple the both parties husband and wife surrender their lives to the Lord where there is a, an acknowledgement of going off track of uh, of not being in God even if it is for a small period there must be an acknowledgement and a surrender and God starts to give you the the power to overcome 
in the turn of this year many homes experience financial setbacks they have experienced physical attacks and emotional stress and i can tell you now as the time gets closer for the end of days the devil is not going to let go of his children in that they going to start attacking the believers more and more and there will be some other spiritual attacks upon the children of god so i want you to be very aware of this and one of the things that i need to assure you is that as long as you walk in god whatever the devil throws at you god will give you the sustenance and the strength to walk through this you know a few days i thought i'll mention this because it is pivotal to the dismantling of the image of a family in in god's eyes what is what does god consider a family a mother a father and children the dismantling of that idea that god has is is seen plainly in this world at this time just a few days ago the grammy awards took place and i hate to give these people traction but i think we probably used to seeing these things but i just want to bring it so that it highlights the world that we are living in at this time and the push for ungodliness take a look at this clip Kim Petras and Sam Smith had an epic night at the 2023 Grammys. The duo hit the stage to deliver a majorly racy performance of their hit song Unholy. Kim was seen on stage in a cage surrounded by dancers with whips. Sam rocked a bright red top hat with horns while belting out the song for the audience, and the crowd went wild for their performance. Sam, thank you. You're a true angel and hero in my life, and I love you. And everyone who made the song too. I love you guys so much. At this year's Grammy Awards, two LGBTQI people won an award for I don't know best duo couple or whatever that was. And this gentleman, who now wants to be identified as they or them. Sam Smith and Kim Petras if you look at these people you would think that uh they are the, the, the Kim is basically a a man dressed as a woman or a woman dressed as a man god knows but this this is where the world is leaning towards and what is more amazing is who sponsored this our dear friends that make drugs so when you You know when you look at what has been happening to the world in the last few years when you look at the television programs you'll find that in every program they introducing a wife who has a wife and uh, a man who has a husband they introducing they throwing this issue in and one of them is CBS and before this video that emerged at the grammys cbs made a tweet let's worship and they deleted that tweet but it's on record people have captured that tweet so they give us an idea that the open worship of satan is going to be accepted by the masses and they pushing that agenda that agenda talks directly against family and that's why there's a burden on my heart to bring the strength that god gives upon homes now i want you to see how the devil has worked in breaking homes in infiltrating homes especially during the time of the apostles Now I didn't get to read these parts to you but we were talking about the exploits of the apostle Thomas in India. 
and I'll just briefly tell you what happened. There was a, a lady uh, who was the wife of a general in India. And this lady was very unhappy in their relationship because the general was bossy over her, made her do things that she was not happy to do. But as in the culture of the Indians, in India, especially at that time, they had to be subject to their husband's authority and will. That makes a human being, any human being, a depressed human being. And one day this general had a function that he couldn't attend. And so he sent his wife and his daughter to attend that function. And on the way back, being miserable as she was doing this for her husband. He says, no, they have to show the face, their face as a family. So he forced her to go. On her way back, she was attacked by a spirit, an unclean spirit. That spirit attacked her and her daughter. And for three years, that woman starved herself, lay in bed, basically demon-possessed, and nobody could help. And the general heard of Thomas, that Thomas was in town. So he went to Thomas for help. To cut a long story short, when Thomas explained to him what he needs to do, he openly received Jesus Christ as his savior. At that invitation that she, he accepted, Thomas went to pray for his wife and his daughter. And immediately, that spirit left them and they were as a family again. But it so happens that the king of the land had a brother. That brother's wife was a follower of Thomas as well. And she was very depressed and possessed. And so Thomas healed her also. And from the time he healed her, she had no feeling for being with her husband. And her husband begged her to come and be with him in a man-wife relationship. And she refused. And so the king's brother blamed Thomas for changing his wife. Because once she was subject to him and she did everything. And he knew because it was common knowledge that if he accepted the Lord and they were of one mind and one accord, that his wife would accept him and they would probably have a normal husband-wife relationship. But this man instead spoke to the king, his brother, and got the king to hunt Thomas down, to arrest him, to uh, torture him, and Right up till the end of this whole story, this man never gave his life to the Lord. And this, gen this uh, king's brother lost his wife and he lost his home and his family because he refused. And this lady, his wife, followed Thomas everywhere and received peace in her heart from that moment on. So giving you those two scenarios where both the husband and the wife, the general and his wife accepted the Lord, compared to the king's brother and his wife, that home was broken. And this home with the general and his wife was intact. There's further stories. You know, I'm, I'm taking an interest in sharing with you the exploits of all the apostles as far as I can. So that you can see the trend of how the devil targets homes, families, women, how they possess uh, family members. And sometimes you might think that you're going through a normal problem. Meanwhile, inside of that home somewhere, inside someone, there is a darkness, a spirit, a demon of sorts that is bent on destroying that home. And once you acknowledge the way to overcome, in fact, the, 
the general's wife and the king's brother's wife told Thomas, if you leave us and go, we want our protection. We want that mark of protection. And so they were baptized and they received the Holy Spirit inside of them. And this is the only way to afford you protection. And so pay attention as I read to you. I'm giving you some interesting things, some expanded views of things that happened in ancient of days. I'm reading from the Acts of Andrew and Matthew. At that time, all the apostles were gathered together and divided the countries among themselves, casting lots. And it fell to Matthias to go to the land of anthropophagy. Now anthropophagy is cannibals. The land where cannibals live. They only eat human flesh. Uh, now the men of that city ate no bread, nor drank wine, but ate the flesh and drank the blood of men. And every stranger who landed there, they took and they put out their eyes and gave him a magic drink which took away his understanding. Now, you know, I've been teaching you about how these elites, these pedophiles, these child sacrifices that are now guised as world leaders, they use the drinking of blood to replicate things like magic mushrooms, things like adreno adrenochrome. When you drink human blood, especially when that blood has been adrenalized, you know, I taught you this before. When you make someone very scared, you increase the adrenaline inside of their blood. Their body produces adrenaline. And if you kill that person at that time when they are in extreme fear, that blood is highly filled with adrenochrome or adrenaline. And when you drink that blood, that highly energized blood, it causes your spirit inside your body to raise up itself and enter the spirit realm. Now these cannibals that were living in that land used that practice to have contact with their gods. And you know and I know that those are demonic entities. It's not just that these people are doing it now to reach their gods. They have been doing it even from the time of Peter and Paul. Now we'll continue this reading. But I want you to just look. These people that I'm talking about, Matthew now and Andrew, were not in India. But they were very close by on the borders. But even today in India, if you look at certain clips that I may have for you, you'll find cannibalism is rife there. There are some videos that are too graphic for me to even play, but they are actually eating dead human beings. Good evening. In one of the most horrific murders that we've ever reported, a couple in Kerala who allegedly mutilated and killed two women in a ritualistic human sacrifice to get rich quick may have even eaten the flesh of their victims is what the police say. So, you know, <laughs> the frightening thing is for Matthew, this is where they asked him to go where cannibalism was taking place, anthropophagy. So when Matthew arrived, he was so treated. In other words, they took out his eyes, but the drink had no effect on him. So he didn't lose his understanding with the drink. And he remained praying for help in the prison. And a light came and a voice, Matthias, my beloved, received sight and he saw. And the voice continued, I will not forsake thee, abide 27 days and I will send Andrew to deliver thee and all the rest. And the Savior went up into heaven. Matthias remained singing praises when the executioners came to take victims. He kept his eyes closed. They came and looked at the ticket on his hand and said, three days more, 
and we will slay him. For every victim had a ticket tied on his hand to show the date when his 30 days would be fulfilled. So the picture is clear. Matthew is waiting in prison now with his eyes dug out. He cried to God. God gave him back his sight. And God told him, wait until the 27th day. And then I'm going to send Andrew to come and save you and the rest of them here. When 27 days had elapsed, the Lord appeared to Andrew. Now on the other side where Andrew was, God showed, showed himself to him. In the country where he was teaching and said, in three days, Matthias is to be slain by the man-eaters. Go and deliver him. How is it possible for me to get there in time? Early tomorrow, go to the shore and you will find a ship. And he left them and he left him. They went, Andrew and his disciples found a little boat and three men. The pilot was the Lord and the other two were angels. Andrew asked whether they were going to the land of the man-eaters. I would go there, I would go there too. Every man avoids that place. Why will you go? I have an errand to do. And if you can take us, he said, come on board. Now, I'm shortening everything for you, but the story is that Andrew was told by a voice, go find a boat and go across to the land of the man-eaters. And so when Andrew went, he found the Lord there, but he didn't know it was the Lord. He didn't know they were angels and they offered to take him across. Jesus was the pilot of that boat and he gave him, he gave them bread to eat. But uh, the disciples of, of um, Andrew, they looked at the waves. They looked at the storm of the, what was going on and they said, we can't eat. Our stomach is upset and we're fearing. So Jesus told Andrew, why don't you tell him the story of when you had with your master, the Lord Jesus, when you all were in this situation. Why don't you tell him what happened to you all and how Jesus come the sea. Andrew is getting a bit... Uh, you know saying you know I'm, I, how do you know all these things and anyway Andrew told his disciples what happened with them when they were on the boat with Jesus and he gave his disciples a little bit peace and they fell asleep the waters went calm and then Andrew talks, talks to this pilot who we know is Jesus and he says tell me your art 16 years did I sail the sea and this is the 17th and I never saw such steering. The ship is as if it, it, it is on land. Jesus said, I too have often sailed the sea and been in danger. But because you are a disciple of Jesus, the sea knows you and is still. Andrew praised God that he had met such a man. Jesus said, tell me why the Jews did not believe on your master. Andrew enumerated the miracles, yet he said the Jews did not believe. Perhaps he did not do these signs before the high priests. Yes, he did, both openly and privately, and they would not believe. What were the signs he did in secret? Oh, man with the spirit of questioning, why do you tempt me thus? Andrew tells Jesus. I do not tempt you, Jesus says, but my soul rejoices to hear his wonderful works. Andrew says, I'll tell you then. Once when we, the twelve, went with our Lord to a heathen temple that he might show us the ignorance of the devil, the high priest saw us and said, why do you follow this man who says he is the son of God? Has God a son is not this Joseph and Mary's son? And his brothers are James and Simon. And our hearts were weakened. And Jesus perceived it. And took us apart into the wilderness. And did mighty signs. And strengthened our faith. And we said to the priests, Come and see, for he has convinced us. Verse 13. And the priest came to the heathen temple. And Jesus showed us the form of the heavens that we might learn whether it were true or not. Thirty men of the people and four priests were with us. On the right and left of the temple 
Jesus saw two sphinxes carved and turned to us and said, Behold the form of heaven. These are like the cherubim and seraphim in heaven. Now, he went to this Jebusite temple. Jebusites are part of the Canaanite tribe. And it's almost as if, well it is, that this is a form of demon worship at this temple now. I mean, we all know what it is. And this uh, religious sect, this temple people, the devil gave them insight into what God's throne looks like. With two angels, cherubim, cherubim guarding the throne of God, with, you know, in that form. So what the devil taught these worshippers of darkness in the temple to make two sphinxes that resemble what is in heaven. And so Jesus was showing them what heaven looks like and he says this is like what is in heaven. And then Jesus begins to talk to the sphinxes. And he said to the sphinx on the right, you semblance of that which is in heaven, made by craftsmen, come down and convince these priests whether I be God or man. And it came down. Andrew is telling them this carved image came down and spoke and said, O foolish sons of Israel, this is God who made man. Tell me not that I am a stone image. Better are the temples than your synagogue. Our priests purify themselves seven days from women and approach not the temple. But you straight come straight from defilement. The temples will abolish your synagogues and become churches of the only begotten Son of God. I want you to take note of that sentence. Jesus or oh, Andrew is saying, the temples that is physically built by hands, God is going to destroy these synagogues. And the temples that will now be made will be the children of God in whom God will start to dwell. And it's, it's, it's actually telling the Jews at that time that they are defiled. They don't follow a, a principle of righteousness. And your whole temple setting is going to be destroyed and the new temple will be the children of God. The priest said, it speaks magic. You heard it say that this man spoke with Abraham. How is that possible? Jesus said to the Sphinx, go to the cave of Mamre and call Abraham. Bid him rise with Isaac and Jacob and come to the temples of the Jebusians to convict the priests. The Sphinx went and called and 12 patriarchs rose and came out. To which of us wast thou sent? Not to you, but to the three patriarchs. Go back and rest. They went back and the three patriarchs came and convicted the priests. Jesus bade them return and sent the things back, back to its place. But the priest did not believe and many other wonders he did. I don't know whether I need to elaborate on what was going on in the picture there. But Jesus told that Sphinx, go call, these people don't believe, go call the, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob because these priests believe in them. And so the Sphinx called them out, but not only them came, all the other 12 patriarchs in, included uh, all the other uh, ancient people that the Jews worship uh, or look up to, came out. And Jesus says, no, I don't need all of you. I just, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so these people spoke to the Jews and still they didn't believe. So this conversation was going on and while Jesus was talking to him in that boat, Andrew fell asleep. When Andrew got up, he was on the shore uh, because Jesus left them there. All the disciples were asleep with Andrew and the boat went away. Andrew got up, Andrew rejoiced and prayed the Lord to show himself and Jesus appeared in the form of a beautiful young child. Jesus reassured him and told him what trials awaited him in that city and encouraged him to endure and departed. They entered the city unseen and went to the prison. 
you know, that's when Matthew, where Matthew was now to go save Matthew. The seven guards fell dead at his prayer. At the sign of the cross, the doors opened. He found Matthias and they greeted each other. Andrew looked at the victims who were naked and eating grass and smote his breast and reproached the devil. How long warest thou with men? Thou didst cause Adam to be cast out of paradise. Thou didst cause his bread that was on the table to be turned to stones. Again thou didst enter into the midst of the angels and cause them to be defiled with women and made their savage sons, the giants, to devour men on earth so that God sent the flood. So Andrew is looking at what's happening to these people. Their eyes are out. Their mind is lost. These victims with Matthew. They eating grass. And Andrew is rebuking Satan for what he's been doing. How long are you going to be carrying on doing this? Then Matthew and Andrew prayed and they laid hands on the prisoners and their sight was restored and then their sense and Andrew bade them go out of the city and remain under a fig tree and await him. There were 270 men and 49 women. Andrew commanded a cloud and he took Matthew and the disciples and the brethren to the mount where Peter was teaching. And there they remained. So while Matthew was waiting on that mountain where Peter was teaching, verse 22 tells us the executioners came. Those came to look for the prisoners now and found the prison empty and the guards dead. They went back and reported to the rulers. The ruler said, go and fetch the seven dead men for us, those guards that are dead, to eat today. And assemble tomorrow the old men and we will cast lots for seven a day and eat them till we can fit our ships and send and collect people to eat. So they fetched the seven corpses. There was a furnace in the midst of the city and a great vat for the blood. They put the men on the vat. Now I'm not going to read to you some of the other th parts that took place but just to say that when they were planning to murder these, uh, these same uh, dead people and capture old men because his prisoners now escaped and they were on the mountain with Matthew. Um, Andrew prayed and uh, these soldiers couldn't find these people. They couldn't, they couldn't arrest them. They couldn't take them for eating. So these rulers of the land now, they became hungry. These man eaters, they didn't have food because that's the only thing they lived on. And Andrew was talking to Beliah. My Lord will humble thee to the abyss. The devil said, I hear your voice and I know it, but where you stand I cannot see. Andrew said, Art thou not called Amael because thou art blind? So one of these demons is called Amael under the leadership of Beliah, Satan, whatever you call him. Now, the reason why these people were blinded. You know when, when these man-eaters collected people, the prisoners. Every time somebody came into their city as, to visit, they captured them, put their eyes out, put a tag on them to the date which they're going to be eaten. And that's the only thing they lived on. There was nothing else they ate. But the reason they dug their eyes out is because this God, Amael, is what they call a blind God. In Gnosticism, the Yahweh, or Yaldabaoth, they call it, claims sole divinity for himself. The voice of Sophia comes forth calling Samuel, due to his ignorance. On the origin of the world, his name is explained as blind God. And his fellow archons are said to be blind too. So this Amael is same as Samael. It's all derivatives of the same God. They appear, you'll find it, it's mentioned in a movie in 1966, Incubus. 
there's even video games of this Samael or Amael demon. But he's known as a blind god. And one of the reasons we see them doing this, they give these prisoners that they capture to eat now. They take out their eyes so they physically cannot see. And then they give them something to drink so they are mentally blind as well because they cannot reason anymore. So the devil seeks to enact who he is, the blind God. He makes people blind. He makes them physically blind. And more importantly, he makes them spiritually blind. So he is the God of blindness in their sense. And that's what Paul was trying to teach us some 30, 40 years later in the book of 2 Corinthians after this Andrew incident. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden, hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine. So this same Samael God, and all the demons under his care, they are responsible for spiritually blinding pre people, including the priests that we spoke about earlier. When Jesus called the Sphinx down, those were in the form of how heaven is, to bring everybody to convince them, and yet, who blinded them? Samael. Samael is the one that blinds everybody who is not in God, including believers who think they are believers, but they still cannot see. Who does that? Samael. So Andrew is busy communicating with Belial, with Samael. And, but Samael cannot see him because he cannot, he, Andrew made himself invisible. So Samael himself now is blinded and cannot see Andrew. And so Andrew, uh, this God said to Andrew, show yourself and we'll get there in a moment. But in the meantime, all those rulers, they are looking now to find out who this person is that set their prisoners, free. in other words, to, that robbed them of their food, as sick as that sounds. And they ran and took him after he made himself visible and, de and they debated how to kill him. If we cut off his head, it will not pain him enough. Let us put a rope round his neck, drag him through the streets every day till he dies and divide his body and eat it. They did so. Well, they didn't eat his body, but they dragged him and his flesh was torn and his blood flowed and they cast him into prison with his hands bound behind him. And so they did next day and he wept and he cried to the Lord and the devil told the people to smite his mouth that he might not speak and they bound his hands behind him and left him in the prison. The devil took seven other demons whose, whom Andrew had driven out from places in the neighborhood. This seems like a reference to the older acts. And they came to Andrew and the devil said, Now we will kill you like your master whom Herod slew. And he said, Now my children, kill him. The devil is talking to all these unbelievers, man eaters. But they saw the seal on his forehead and they were afraid and said, Do you kill him? For we cannot. And one of them said, if we cannot kill him, let us mock him. And they stood before him and taunted him with help with his helplessness. And he wept. And a voice, the devil's voice disguised said, Why weep? 
Andrew said, because of the Lord's word, have patience with them, otherwise I would have shown you. But if the Lord grant me a visitation in this city, I will chastise you as you deserve. Now I want you to see what these people went through. I mean, just take a moment to understand what these people went through for the sake of planting the first seeds of the gospel in that part of the world. Peter, Andrew, Matthew, all of them, and here we see about Andrew. I mean, he was tied, beaten, dragged across the city till his flesh tore. He was weeping because God was not allowing him to come out of this bondage. But there was a reason. And Andrew, he, he was crying because, you see, that's why when I show you this, I need you to know that God understands. He sees. He was looking at Andrew and he said to Andrew, I can't allow you to come out of this just yet. Just wait. Just have patience. So when you're going through something that is making your heart heavy, I mean, these people went through, through worse. But God wants you to hang on. Even these mighty men of God who walked with Jesus wept. They cried. So there's nothing wrong with you knowing that you're going through something and your heart is being heavy. But I want you to look up with hope because that's what Andrew did. Andrew said, you know, if, you, if God only allows me, I, I'll chastise you like how you deserve, Satan. But God is holding me back for whatever reason. But the reason became clearer. I'm not going to get into that a little bit later in this reading. If eventually, all those people, the man eaters, gave their lives to Jesus through Andrew. And Andrew left that city unharmed. And he changed the people in essence there. That they no longer were the people they used to be. They became normal, God-fearing. And the demon that was ruling in that place left because of people like Andrew. God healed him completely. And sometimes the picture we cannot see. But there is a reason God allows everything. These people need to see what somebody like Andrew went through. The power of God that was on his side. And how he was able to... That gave them faith and belief that one single man rose up against an entire army of man eaters and won the battle that convinced them that there is a god that is much higher than the man eating god that samael is not as great as they thought these people used that man eating thing so that they can have contact with their god now we go back to Matthew and we're reading about Matthew's account. This is a different scripture. Let's just, I have to leave so much out, but I'm going to take you to the essence of the story. This Matthew was on the mountain. About that time, Matthew, the holy apostle and evangelist of Christ, was in, abiding in the mountain resting and praying in his tunic and apostolic robes without sandals. And behold, Jesus came to Matthew in the likeness of infants who sing in paradise and said, to him peace to you so you remember Andrew left him with Peter on the mountain Peter was preaching and all these other guys and and Matthew remained there uh, fasting and then Jesus came and told him I want you to go down to the city where there are man eaters let's read that in paragraph 3 oh Matthew take this rod of mine and go down from the mountain and go into Myrna the city of the man eaters and plant it by the gate of the church which you and Andrew founded. So this, this place where, where, where Matthew was now. God sent him to another man eating place. And that place Andrew and him planted a church. And a, and a bishop named Plato was in charge there. And so Matthew came down to go to that city. And these people were dangerous People who just eat you as well. Now as he was coming down, we'll read that section. Matthew went down from the mountain, hastening to the city. And as he was about to enter into the city, there he met Fulvana, the wife of the king, and his son Falvunus, 
and his wife Irva, who were possessed by an unclean spirit and cried out, shouting, Who has brought you here again, Matthew? Or who has given you the rod for our destruction? For we see only the child Jesus, the Son of God, who is with you. Do not go then, O Matthew, to plant the rod for the food and for the transformation of man-eaters. For I have found what I shall do to you. For since you drove me out of this city and prevent me from fulfilling my wishes among the man-eaters, behold, I will raise up against you the king of the city and he will burn you alive. Now, the king heard about what happened. This Fulvana and his, and his son Fulvanus and, and the son's wife, they all got delivered from demonic possession. That spirit cried out and left their bodies. And the king got very upset. Apparently, firstly, he, first he was excited. Then he realized, wait, wait, wait. This man is not teaching us about man eating. Which means that we cannot eat flesh of man anymore. That made this king very upset. And so he sought to kill Matthew, to find him and kill him. Because those three people now started going to church and the scripture tells us they were singing in the church. The king's wife, the king's son and his, do and his daughter-in-law. And so they all three were in the church and this made the king upset because these people now were eating other things, not human flesh. So he got angry one morning, the king, because he was hungry. He didn't eat because this man was converting everybody and there was nobody to eat and everybody was getting saved. They couldn't find Matthew or couldn't arrest him or couldn't get anything done. But there was a demon now who was the God that was leading them to worship through man eating. You know, we read about that when we spoke about Andrew. This was a different type of spirit. Man eating, drinking of their blood caused these inhabitants, these man eaters to contact the gods from that world and so these gods couldn't have a relationship with these men or the people from that city now anymore and so the demon transformed himself and went to the king in the form of a soldier and said to him you need to get a hold of this Matthew because everybody all of you are going to starve because the more people he converts the, 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 the more you're going to be hungry and you're not going to be able to find food. So he's, the king sent soldiers to go and arrest Matthew. That was unsuccessful. He sent 10 more soldiers. He says, if you catch him, eat him. Kill him and eat him. And the demon who had appeared to the king in the form of a soldier, being again transformed in the form of a soldier, stood before the king and said to him, you see, O king, this stranger has bewitched them all. The king says to him, and who are you? And he says, I am the demon who dwelt in your wife and in your son and in your daughter-in-law and my name is Asmodeus. And this Matthew drove me out of them. And now behold, your wife and your son and your daughter-in-law sing and with him in the church. And I know, O king, that you also after this wilt believe in him. Oh, there's our friend Asmodeus. You remember we spoke to you about him when we were reading about Solomon and how when he was building the temple all these demons were manifesting themselves you remember in the complete book of Enoch we read it and we read in 21 and I at once bade another demon to be led unto me and instantly they approached me the demon Asmodeus bound and I asked him who art thou but how shall I answer thee for thou art a son of man Whereas I was born of an angel seed by a daughter of man. So this was a, one of the Nephilim spirits, Asmodeus. Born by a fallen angel who had relations with the women on earth. We read about that in Genesis also. It continues, I am called Asmodeus among mortals. And my business is to plot against the newly wedded. So that they may not know each other. And I sever them utterly 
by many calamities and I waste away the beauty of virgin women and estranged their hearts. And I said to him, Is this thy only business? And he answered me, I transport men into fits of madness and desire when they have wives of their own so that they leave them and go off by night and day to others that belong to other men with the result that they commit sin and fall into murderous deeds. I have so much more to go but I just want to stop here for a moment and probably let this sink into you. This king eventually after trying to murder Matthew they, he put him on on how they uh, cremate bodies you know I've seen a, a cremation out in the open but this was with a person alive they put Matthew on a pile of wood they poured on him tar they poured on top of that things that light up you know like, like sticks and leaves and all that sort of thing and they lit it to kill him and if the fire went out miraculously but eventually Matthew died of all his injuries according to the will and plan of God but the king after all that what he did eventually gave his life to Jesus another sacrifice of a servant of God but what is important to take out from this is that once the king accepted the Lord together with his family who was now singing in the church before Matthew died Matthew ordained him to be a presbyter in other words like a, a pastor in the church with his wife and deacons his son and his daughter-in-law all these people were now involved in the church that Plato was the pastor of, senior pastor, that Matthew planted there in that place. But the target of this enemy, Asmodeus, was to break up couples. Now Asmodeus does not die because he's a demon. These spiritual entities do not die. They've traveled through time. They live amongst us today. Asmodeus and his type those called after him they look to destroy homes and the only way to piece homes back together is for both people to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord surrender the life otherwise the king's family would have been torn apart the family of every person who does not come, come to Christ they are vulnerable and the enemy will seek to destroy them. So when you think of doing something against God, especially in this day and age, going astray, doing something that you know you're not supposed to be doing, I want you to take stock of how your relationship is with God put it right you just have to leave a slight crack open and Asmodeus comes in but as you've seen God can save the worst of human beings so long as they have a soul and they get conviction no matter how deep in darkness they go this man attempted to kill one of the senior apostles of God God forgave him God restored him and even put him inside the church. He did that with Paul. So no matter how far back you've gone, how astray you've gone, God does not judge you if you surrender to him and say, Lord, I made mistakes. Please renew my life with you. And you'll find that the devil will still try and poke darts but as long as there's unity within, the enemy cannot win. Let us preserve what you have in your home. Can I pray with you? Just raise up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for your divine covering. I ask for your protection. 
Lord, there's different ways in which demons come to operate within our homes, within each person. He will attack the weakest of us, but Lord, I pray as there's strength in the family that we will strengthen one another, that we will encourage one another, build one another. Father, that we will put our lives, all of us, right in you. Cover us with your blood. Be our God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. I want you to have yourself a blessed week. See you again next week. God bless you.